I loved Ray's children's message today because it reminded me of how excited kids get to go and do things. And yet today when he said, get up and go, they were like, I don't know, I'm still a little bit tired. And I even remember when I was a kid, uh, coming to church for me was much like for them. Uh, similar things. Went to Sunday school and in summer when there wasn't Sunday school, I sat with my parents and did the same thing that's happening here. And I always remember, I always held out hope. Do you know what I hoped for during church? I hoped that whoever was getting snacks got donuts for the day. That's what I hoped for. Because I knew at the end of church I could go out and there'd be donuts. I guarantee you I don't see donuts today, kids. There's good stuff out there. Make it through, you'll be okay. It's right there. It's right there. Sometimes we just need a little encouragement. Sometimes we, we know what we're supposed to do. We know the way that we've been called. We know where we're sent to, but we just need a little bit, a little bit of encouragement. I hope today that you receive that encouragement. We're ending this series called Loved and Sent, where I hope that through this time that you have learned and been really encouraged that you are loved, that no matter what is happening around you, no matter what messages you're getting from people around you or whatever it is, that you at your core are greatly and dearly loved. That God loves you simply because he has made you, you. Not because of what you've done or what you could do, or even in spite of what you have done, he simply loves you because you are his creation. When life gets tough, you can build that and build upon that as your foundation and know that he is always on your side, that he is always loving you. In addition to that, because you are loved, in that love, you are sent to the world to show others the same thing, to, to tell them that they are truly and dearly loved. We struggle with so many things today, so many things that, that take our minds off of who God is. We struggle with so many things that tear away our identity, that, that tell us who we are, that tell us we're not enough, that tell us we'll never be loved, that tell us that we could never possibly be who we are supposed to be, and yet God comes to us. And he says, you are who I've made you to be. You are my masterpiece. I have loved you in Jesus, and I am calling you in Jesus to go into this world and be who I've called you to be. That is your purpose. That is what I've given you to do. And I will give you all the tools. I will give you everything that you need because you are mine. You are loved and you are sent. This is who we are. The answer to these two questions we've been going out is identity and purpose. And I hope that you've seen, and I hope that this encourages you to know that at your core, you have been worth it. That Jesus died for you, that you are worth his blood. That he gave this sacrifice to bring you back to God. But not just you, right? But for, for all people, for, for everyone, for all of God's creation. And you matter what God has gifted you with, the skills, the gifts, the talents, the unique ways that he has knit you together. It matters because he calls you to work as part of his kingdom, to be a part of his kingdom, to help share others the same thing that you too have learned. And so the key today, the key today in our scripture was a simple word, go. Now, I'm not giving you permission to leave right now, <laughs> but when we go from here, I hope that you take this with you, that what God is calling you to do is not to be introspective for the rest of your life. He's not calling you to be well, somebody who only has kind of this, this, this small little bubble of people around them, and that's kind of where we're comfortable, and that's where we stay. No, God is calling us to very much get out of our comfort zones and to go, to go, to be where people are. Uh, in our gospel reading today, Jesus came and told his disciples, and I just want to be clear, who does this include? Was this just like the 11, or is this all of his disciples? What do you think? There's donuts after church. Where no? What do you think? Who is it for? It's for all. It's for everyone. It's for you. If you're raising your hand, yes, it's for you. Yes. Jesus tells us that he has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. So what does that mean that Jesus is the king of? He's, he's the king of everything. You cannot imagine something that Jesus is not the king of. He has authority and power over all things. So what does he do with this power? What is his purpose? Well, with this power, he encourages you. 
He empowers you. He says, I'm going to work through you. So he says, therefore, in my name, with this power, go. Go. Go and make disciples of all nations by baptizing them and teaching them. I want you to pause for just a moment and, and, and remember this, that your journey of faith, your like the reason why you are here today is because of other people. Because other people have been loved and sent by Jesus to know who he is, to know that they can share his goodness and his hope with others, and they've brought you here. Now, there may be some people in your life who you could point to directly who have mentored you and your kind of spiritual journey and your journey in following Jesus. But maybe you can't. Maybe it's just kind of a general thing. Well, it's not a general thing at all. It is Jesus working through people like you throughout all of the world, throughout all the centuries to help people see that they are loved and they are given a purpose in Jesus. Jesus works through people. So when he says, I'm going to, with all of my authority, work through my disciples, those who follow me, and I want them to go, he means it. He means he wants us to go and and be present with others. Go and make disciples of all nations. And all nations, again, let's be clear, means only people that think exactly the way I do. Well, no, no, I said that the wrong way, right? No, that was that was an intrusive thought there. No, no. That's, that's Isaiah. That's the, I am a man of unclean lips. No, go and make disciples of all nations means go to all nations, all people, all, it doesn't matter, whatever. There are no divisions in this. Help people understand how much God loves them. This is the impetus for things like a Lutheran Bible translators, a whole organization that is dedicated to creating scripture, translating scripture into the native languages of every single person on this earth of every language that you can find, that we can understand, that we can figure out how do we translate scripture into that native language so that the people with their heart language that they speak can hear the goodness of God and how much they are loved in that language. This is part of going, making disciples of all nations. Now he says, look, how are we going to make disciples? Well, by baptizing and teaching. And here as Lutherans, we baptize. We know that baptism is a gift of God. It starts off our journey of faith and the rest of our life is meant to be taught, to follow Jesus more closely each and every day. So we bring others alongside us. We show them, we model, we mentor, we coach. And as more are brought alongside us, then they too learn how to model and mentor and coach and make disciples. And this happens throughout every generation. But what Jesus does here, I think, is key for all of us. He says, I'm going to give you all this power and all this authority to go into all the nations and make disciples by baptizing and teaching. Here's what he doesn't say. He doesn't say, and based on how well you do, you will be judged. Did did you hear that? I, I didn't hear that anywhere. That's not what he said at all. Sometimes we feel like that. We feel like, well, gosh, I'm just not cutting it anymore. I'm just not right where I'm supposed to be. That's, that's not what he says. You're not going to be judged on that. Instead, what he says is, I'm going to be with you, is that as you struggle through all this, as you try to figure it out, as you have great successes and great failures, I am going to be with you. In all of the times of your life, he will be with you. This Jesus that loves us so much promises us that there will not be a time of our lives that he is not present with us. Think about that for a moment. There have probably been times, and there have been in my life, where it's been very difficult to feel the presence of God. And yet, I know that he is with me. I know that he is there. His promise is true. And when we look back on those times afterwards, we see sometimes ways that his hand has worked to make things happen that we could have never ever imagined. This promise is key. And in making disciples and going out into all the world, he will not leave us. We will not be alone. He will be with us. All right, so here's the question. How do we do this? If Jesus says we need to go, how do we go? And one of the things that's easiest for us is to send money to help other people go, right? That's an easy thing. And it's a good thing. Let me say that right now. It's a good thing to encourage and enable and empower other people with specific gifts and talents to go into all the world. 
is a very, very good thing. Here's also another easier thing to do. Sometimes with the people that you're closest with, your family, your friends, even sometimes your neighbors, of, of showing them who Jesus is by, through your actions, right? By, by being kind to them, by, by sharing with them, by walking through life together with them, by being that person who can listen to them and they can go to, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. And so we do that. But there's one key piece that sometimes makes us a little bit uncomfortable. And it's the piece of when we go, how, are gonna people, how will people know who Jesus is? And like I said earlier, uh, you're all here because somebody has shown you who Jesus is. Somebody has told you about Jesus. And as we go, we are going also to have opportunities to tell people about Jesus, to use our words. In 1 Peter 3, it says this, if someone asks you about your hope as a believer in Jesus, be ready to explain it. Do this in a gentle and respectful way. Keep your conscience clear, all right? As someone, explain your hope as a believer. Be ready for this. Because as you walk alongside people, and you've seen this, people go through so many things. They need to hear where hope is, hope that is not going to fail them, hope that is not going to leave them. That hope is Jesus. How do we speak about that? All right. I want you to think right now of the last time that you talked to somebody, physically talked, used words, spoke about Jesus to another person. Some of us are ready for this. And some of us haven't had this opportunity. It hasn't been something we've sought out. So I want to help you as as we get ready to go, to prepare you, to encourage you to go into the world where you are going to have the opportunity to share who Jesus is with people around you. Four things to think about. Four things that you can think through right now that will help you speak about who Jesus is. The first thing is, as you're walking alongside people, the questions might come like, why do you why do you believe in this scripture thing? What, what is the Bible? We've gotten, that, that's, a, that's a question that I've gotten many times. What is the Bible all about? How would you answer this? I'm gonna give you like five seconds to think this through. Five seconds, that seems hardly enough, right? What is the Bible all about? The way we've talked about it around here, the way I would answer that is the Bible is about God trying to bring his people back to him. It's God trying to reconnect his people back with him because we've, we've messed up. That's, that's the quest. That's the story of the whole Bible. Eventually, Jesus comes and does that. But the Bible is about God wanting to connect his creation, his people back together with him. And that, if, if we take that stance, if we talk about it that way, well, it, it takes a lot of people's ideas of God off on a different path. Sometimes we feel like God is against us, that God is uh, maybe out to get us, or that we're not worthy to be in God's presence, but saying that the Bible is about God bringing his people back to him, really, well, it speaks about God who loves us and cares for us. Second question, who is Jesus? How would you explain this? What would you say? Think about this for just a second. If somebody asks you, who is Jesus? What words do you use? Okay. So who is Jesus? Well, Jesus was a real person. He walked on this earth. He was a teacher. He healed people. We also know that he was something more than that, that he was the Son of God himself. If you don't have a handle on the Jesus story, like who he was and what he did, Um, During the summer, we'd love for you to get a handle on that a little more. There's a book on the round table on the way out. It's called God With Us. It's basically the first four Gospels all smushed together and put in a chronological order so that like a narrative, like like a story, you can read through who Jesus is and and learn that and kind of build that up within yourself. Take one of those on your way out and read that over the summer with us. There's a bookmark there that'll help you read through it weekly. Uh, We're not going to talk about it specifically at church. It's not our next series kind of thing, but it's good. You need something to read, right, during the summer. It's a big thing. It's there for you. Who is Jesus? Now, here's the key. Why do you care about Jesus? Why is he so important in your life? This person might know that you come to church like our Savior's way. Why do you do that? 
Why is he important? What do you say to this? I mean, this is really at the heart of the matter. I, I would say, you know, Jesus died on the cross. That symbol you see everywhere, it's, it's important because he died there because that was the only way that we could be returned back to God. It was the only way that we could be connected. I can't do it. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. This is your pastor saying that. I'm not good enough. I'm like Isaiah in a place of unclean lips. Jesus had to do this. And because he rose, well, I've been given new life. It's a gift. It's, it's just a gift. I'm incredibly blessed to receive this gift. That's why Jesus is important. The last one, the last question then is really the key because all these things are just about kind of factual things. But what this person really wants to know is why do you believe? Why do you believe? Have you thought about what you would say to that? Why do, why do you believe? How would you explain the hope that you have to someone else? What I say is that I believe, I believe because I need someone to save me. And Jesus has done that. He has changed my life. He has changed my outlook. He has changed my perspective. He has made me into somebody who knows that when I am weak, he is strong. And somebody who knows that I don't need to worry about what's happening to me after this earthly life ends because he has taken care of that. And he gives me freedom today just to live as he's called me to, to love the people around me in his name, to do good things in his name, to when I, when I screw up, which is daily, to know that I will be forgiven. That, that is why I believe. That is why I believe. Why do you believe? Can you speak about that in a way that speaks of God's hope? that would help others understand that you are just like them. And in the quest for understanding our identity and our purpose, how we are loved and we are sent, that we gets down to this, that Jesus has loved us, that he has given us a purpose, and that we're called just to go and live it out. The key thing in all this is remembering that as we struggle with this, as we, as we take on the opportunities that come, as we get out of our comfort zones, which is always going to happen when we go, he is going to be with us. You will not be alone in this. Not only will Jesus be with you, but guess how Jesus works? Well, we've already established that, right? He works through people. He works through us. We will be with you. If you need donuts to get you to do that stuff, we will give you some great donuts, maybe the best donuts you've ever had. Because, well, whatever it takes to take down those obstacles that are keeping you from going and being and sharing the goodness of God with others, we are right there with you, walking alongside you, helping you, encouraging you, just as Jesus does with each and every one of us. So in the end, the mission of the church, our mission, your mission, is to go, to make disciples of all nations, to help other people know that they are loved by Jesus more dearly than they could ever imagine, that they are sent with a purpose greater than they could ever perceive, and to do this with everyone. May we, as a community here, constantly keep our eyes focused on this, that we might help disciples of all nations Come and be a part of his kingdom. Let's close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being with us today. We ask that you would allow us to, to get out of our comfort zones, to know that, Lord, you have placed people around us who need to hear your word of hope, who need to know that there's someone there with them, who need to know that, Lord, in the midst of their struggles and their sufferings, that there will be somebody who walks alongside them and brings them great hope and great peace. Lord, send us send us. Let us be those people that we might speak of a hope that, that transcends just this single episode, but brings peace and joy and hope throughout our entire lives, all the way through eternity. Send us, Lord. Let us be people who, of all nations, share your hope with our words, with our actions, with our entire lives. Send us, Lord. Send us. We pray it all in Jesus' name. 
Amen.